Hey everybody, welcome back to SWAT. What can you tell me about what happened here today? Did that you, lady went crazy is what happened. I heard the shots at the police officers. She was screaming about car. some owl. I knew it had to be the law. Said that she had to kill it. I agreed. Then I heard the shots. So yeah, she's definitely got a screw loose. Is there anything else you can tell me, Mr. Devine? Don't believe the old man. He tell you that his missus is holed up in that house. He won't come out. But that's not the truth. I've seen him wandering around the yard at all times of the night and day. Half the time in some old nightgown. So, is he wanting us to, like, kill her or something? That's interesting that he'd be lying about that. Hello. Bob Lewis, Hollywood Division. We've been called out here to the Longs before for domestic disputes. The husband calls us out, but uh, refuses to press charges against his wife. We found him with bruises to his face and arms. When we questioned Mrs. Long in the past, she seemed off balance, but never threatening. We referred them both to social services for counseling, but uh, nothing's ever come of it. Social people kept saying that this owl does not exist that's causing her to go crazy. Excuse me. How you doing? I'm Sergeant Pete Monroe. I wasn't going to pay My attention partner, to you, officer but you Lewis and I are the responding officers. When we arrived, we found Mr. Long quite agitated, and when questioned, he stated... He was shot at. I would imagine he'd be agitated. His wife opened the door and fired a 22 pistol at them. He said she fired four or five rounds, all misses. He then came across the street okay. to Mr. Devon's so residence. So thinking of <laughs> this phone. game as a kid. That's where the 911 call was placed. Mm. She has a 22. We have on body armor. And she can't shoot the broadside of a barn. Okay, so unless she doing? shot us in the face. This is your first How do you call die up, so it? much in this first mission? Well, don't sweat it. Just uh, do your job. No heroics. How you doing? Good. You'll do fine. Don't worry. Just listen to Packmeyer. I do like the music. Ding, da, ding. Hey. Hey. Don't bother Since me. Since this is your first time out, a little advice for you. Do don't get us told. killed. Do as you're told and don't get and slice the pie. Remember to slice that pie. Hey. How you doing, pup? Don't worry about name. this one. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I was on the scout with Pac Meyer and Rooker. There are limited ports of entry, and those that are there are pretty well boarded up. I think we have a captive audience. Who knows? Maybe she'll come out on her own. Yeah. Easy. <clears throat> of course, we're gonna make it look easy. But, uh, Excuse me, sir. most people, Did this was not easy. Yes, sir. Good. We'll be briefing in a few minutes. You can share the information you have at that time. Briefing! The situation as we know it is this. We have a barricaded white female inside the residence. She's 64 years old and she suffers from various health maladies. She's diabetic and she suffers from a heart condition that requires the use of medication. CNT tells me she's delusional. She thinks the activity outside the house are gangbangers trying to break in. She's a shooter. Approach knowing she's armed and dangerous. This is the layout of the house. On side one, we have a front door entrance. This is a dangerous approach as it has two windows to contend with. Yeah, you're going to die a if you go in that way. A large front window and a small kitchen window. To compensate for that, we've placed snipers here on this side of the street to watch those ports. Apparently, this house has been somewhat fortified over the years. The garage has been sealed off from the house. Side three has one opening, a barricaded window. While negotiations continue with the suspects, we're going to place an emergency assault team on side one for entry through opening two. The emergency entry team will consist of the following. Rhea, scout. Denton, rear guard. Packmire, element lead. For rear containment, side three, pup and whistle. Any questions? This is a soft probe. I want stealth movement. This changes only if the situation changes. Did you have an opportunity to speak to the neighbor? Yes, he said that Mrs. Long is a little more violent than what her husband would lead us to believe. You and Denton are side three, but be aware there's a lot of foliage back there, and you won't have the benefit of sniper coverage. Which is another way to get you killed easy. Remember, all of you, just because the suspect is a female does not mean she's any less violent than a male. 
Just because she's 64 does not mean she's a sweet old lady. Approach this suspect with caution. And she'll F you up. It's kind of waiting for you to ask questions if you really had any, but... I will tell you, this lady, you know, when she has the heart condition, you can't use flashbangs. Here we go. Let's... Sounds like the fat's in the fire. Line up for deployment. Let's go! Boy, I remember hearing that over and over and over playing this game. <clears throat> MP5s, full auto. That's right, we're going in on this little old lady with f f fully automatic MP5s. But that's not really what you should be doing. We, we do Ready? not want to be going... Go! ...inside. There's other things you can do. We want to be going around to side three. Yeah, they're wanting our attention. Okay. Yeah, she's right there. So, if you don't slice the pie, she'll kill you. See, instead of you just going straight over there, it gives you a look and lets her get away. Pop, what's happening? Is the gate locked? So this is what is important use of the lash. Ram on one two corner. I like how he does try to look and see if there is, like, an easily accessible hat on the other side. Like, that we wouldn't have done that, you know. <clears throat> but we also weren't covered, so I could see why they would wait for cover to do that. But let's bring in the battering ram. Time to get this old lady. Ready to kick the gate? Hit it. I'll tell you, they did a really nice job with the FMV, with the real-life stuff mixed in. It, it looks pretty good. It still does look pretty good. You can get killed here really easy. If you forget to slice the pie, <clears throat> you're dead. Or you have to shoot her, which is not what you want, because you... You're not going to get what you need out of this if you shoot her. And definitely if you cause her to have a heart attack and die. Yeah, there she is. Lucy, this is the police. We've come to talk to you. Lucy, this is the police. We're here to help you. Now stop. Stop. Put your hands where I can see them good. This is the police. We just want to talk to you. Now keep your hands up. There you go. Just keep your hands where I can see them. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, now nobody's going to hurt you. I just want you to walk with me over here, okay? Let's go. Let's walk. Yep, and there you go. Nobody's going to hurt you. It's amazing to think that you can beat this in like three minutes when it took me Side over most of my childhood thing even to figure it out. Girl goes running to get shot. <clears throat> All right, everyone, take a seat. We're, we're seated, Before I man. Before I get started, Lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say. Sir? Congratulations, officers. You did an excellent job today. Thanks to your efforts, we have our suspect in custody. Keep up the good work. Sergeant Rooker? You men did a fine job out there today. Take pride in your efforts. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a commendation or two headed this way. Well, that's it. Get some rest. Dismissed. 
Again, you do not need to, re to replay. We've done it. Please <clears> insert good. CD number one, then press enter to continue. And help me find my poor, my poor Rosella. Ready All to right, everybody. Door. We're going to put in a uh, another way to go through this mission here, through the actual house, which I used to get put in a lot as a kid, and it would just Ready wipe, enter door. wipe me out. Never could figure out how to get her to do what you need her to do. I love how aggravated he is. We barely started. Go. If you go too soon, you get wiped out. You gotta be careful. There's specific things that your squad has to do. Entry point clear. Trailer! Kitchen door! So you can see a lot of the things they were talking about in the interview process with how it's been barricaded up through the windows and it's dilapidated quite a bit. The goal of this one is she's in the bathroom and you gotta get in there without getting blown away. You can get your officers killed in this too quite easily. Your poor guy up front there. I've watched him die in this many a time, followed by us. I've said numerous times in this game how much I really enjoy the music and it's just no exception. It, it fits the mood quite well. Pup, you cover Carmichael. Yeah, he's checking under the bed. We kind of at this point know where she's got to be. Michael, pull back. Pup, move in. I'm covering you. Here we go. Lucy? It's the police. Lucy, are you in here? Lucy! She's in the shower. You can screw up here, so you want to get their attention and tell them the suspect's here. Pup, what Quickly. Is it? You don't want to wait. She'll shoot you. Lucy, we're the police. Keep your hands where we can see them. We're here to help you. We want you to come out. No one's going to... And, yep, there we go. She's out. everyone take a seat we're seated before I get started lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say sir congratulations officers you did an excellent job today thanks to your efforts we have our suspect in custody keep up the good work nobody Thunder died Robert. you men did a fine job out there today take pride in your efforts I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see accommodation or two headed this way well that's it get some rest dismissed Woohoo. So there's more that has to be done before the next one will come. Home 45. So we have to come back and do some fun here. Got to do more training. Hello. Hey, Packmeyer. We're working on the Presidente drill. Three targets, multiple engagements. You're going to want to shoot the first target once, the second target once, third target twice, second target once, first target once. Speed load, then you do it all again. Par time is 10 seconds. You up for it? Come on, let's give it a try. Stuff to do with the mouse. <clears throat> with 45s, make ready and...
The Presidente drill is up. There are three targets and multiple engagements. Starting from either the left or the right, shoot the first target once, second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load it's and boom, do boom, it all boom, again. Boom, boom, boom. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. This is the combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets, all bad guys. Reload as necessary. No par time. This is a reflex drill. On the whistle. Now, if you've ever seen uh, the second Dirty Harry movie, Magnum Force, which in my opinion is the best Dirty Harry, they do a whole lot with this, particularly <clears throat> with the uh, young cops. They have a whole part in the movie with like doing these drills. Mostly to show how good they were. But, really good movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. I know when I <clears throat> went and got my concealed weapon permit, mostly just to make sure I could safely fire this a weapon. This is a dozier drill. Engage each of the five They did a lot of stuff. Not like fall. this, but a lot of Reload different types of Par time is five distant seconds. shootings and things On like that. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. That's always the one I was Make the best ready. at playing this as a kid. I could do that. And I played these a lot because half the time I would get killed by that first lady. The Presidente drill is up. There are three targets and multiple engagements. Starting from either the left or the right, shoot the first target once, second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load, then do it all again. Car time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. <coughs> I know that's one of the big things people do complain about this game, but... It's this fun. Is a drill. As long as you don't have to Engage keep replaying a bunch of the stages until they over. Fall. Reload is necessary. Par time is 5 seconds. On the whistle. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. And it's kind of always a random amount. It's like, when should you leave? Have you done enough? Things like that. <clears throat> this is the combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets. All and bad I don't guys. know if, how many of you have actually played this and have no the game. Not got it off GOG or something, but... On the whistle. I remember the book that came with this game was so big, the manual with all the stuff on how to do it and history of the SWAT and LAPD things and the guns and proper procedure. I remember sitting there reading about wind distances and things for sniper rifles and going, oh my gosh. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. It's one of the reasons my mom and dad would buy me some of these games more than like a console game. Because they're like, well, he's learning from this, at least. This is a dozier like, drill. Like, <coughs> the same year I think I got Civil War Generals. Until they fall. Reload is and necessary. I think SimCity. Part time uh, is five seconds. CD-ROM version from the Interplay. Whistle? Which, if you've never played that version with the FMVs, it's wild. I've tried to get it to work. <clears throat> but I cannot. I'd love to get it to work. And I'm sorry for the cough. I is up. can't help it. There are three targets and multiple engagements. This Starting is the only the time I have to right, record, so of course when I did. First target once. This is when I get second sick. Second target once. Third target twice. Second target once. And first target once. Speed load, then do it all again. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. Well, you can speed load a lot faster on this game than in real life, so you just have to click on the thing and it magically reloads. <clears throat> like. You're not going to have to drop that thing out. It's just automatically reloaded. This is the <clears throat> combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets. All bad guys. Reload as necessary. No par time. 
This is a reflex drill. On the whistle. Can I have a... A Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and it can blow your head clean off? That's what I'd like to have. And I know a lot of people complain about SWAT 2 as well. I actually liked SWAT 2 a lot. I was not very good at it. But I did like it. Officers, it was guns more of a strategy-based game. Prepare to commence firing. <clears throat> Make ready. And you can play as Sonny Bonds in that one. Even though he was in Lytton. Not... <laughs> In, Remember, uh, as you train, LA. so shall you fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had st you can stay the whole, whole time, obviously, and do a whole bunch of stuff, but we're Hello. not doing that. I'm JD. JD Saunders. How about you're the new guy from Rooker's Squad? Yeah, I'm interested in learning to shoot. That's great, because I'm the odd man out. I'm the sniper without a partner. Without a partner? Yeah, all snipers are paired up. While one's on the rifle, the other one serves as an observer. You're interested in learning to sharpshoot. All right, come on. I'll show you around. I know my dad, um, had he not had class. 45 caliber 1911 government model he sidearm. Was, he was sniper based CCI from Spear the military during the Vietnam era. ACP jacketed hollow point Luckily for him, ago. where he wore glasses, they wouldn't use him. Winchester 230 grain <laughs> so military here, ball full metal jacket. So I'm here, because I probably wouldn't have been. Rowbar SR-60 308 sniper rifle. Yeah, it's 30 out 6 the it's going to put the mess SR60 out of you. The 308 sniper rifle is engineered in Phoenix, Arizona by Robar Companies for distances up to 600 yards, though most police snipers would not generally fire at a target past 400 yards. According to FBI statistics, the national law enforcement average for target engagement is 71 yards. Along with D-Platoon, the SR-60 308 sniper rifle is used by various law enforcement agencies throughout North America including Phoenix PD SWAT and the Arizona Department of Public Safety. <clears throat> oh. Got Please a call. insert CD number three, then press enter to continue. Rosella. Officer down, 612 Haley, Central Area, oh. Code 3. Not good. Where do you want to start? You need to get into a car, travel across the railroad tracks, and set up across the way. The east side of the building faces the train tracks. That's where the entrance is. I need you to provide cover for the entry team. Your Sierra One. Contact me as soon as you're in position. Right. Sergeant Rooker, what's the situation? We're not sure yet. Officers Tobin and Bale from Central were answering a Code 30 Adam. The officers approached the warehouse and found the front entrance door open. As they were entering the building, they were fired upon. Bale was shot in the face. Oh. Tobin apparently grabbed Bale, dragged him around to the back of the building, and called for assistance. By the time assistance arrived, the firing from within had subsided. Bale's en route to the hospital, and Tobin's standing by to provide information. We're hearing random shots fired. We've set up communications <coughs> in the ice building. The owner's here. Come on. Well, so we've got a cop shooter. Well, of course. I don't want any more damage to occur than already has. Yeah. Mr. Schneibly, this is Sergeant Rooker. Would you mind repeating to him what you just I don't, told me? This is such well, an inconvenience yes, to Hello, me. Hello, I'm Marcia Schneibly. I own this building. Well, the business does. I was just telling this officer here that, well, my warehouse man is missing. And when the police called this morning and said something about someone shooting off guns in my warehouse, well, I thought, well, where's Hector? I mean, he's a diligent employee. He would not just allow someone to come in and shoot up my building. Mr. Schneibly, do you think it could be Hector firing off these weapons? Well, heaven's sake, no. Hector is a sweet young man. A little slow, maybe, but... No, uh, it's college, Hector. But not... Rooker, Packmeyer. Would you please excuse us, Mr. Schneibly? Please finish what you were saying to this officer here. Thank you. We have better things to do. Pup, you deal with this. Mrs. Schneidley, you were saying that you believe your warehouseman is missing? Believe he is missing? Well, I should say so. Hector reports to work Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. He is a very dependable employee. Why, in five years of working for us, he has never missed a day. He shot a cop in the face. Mrs. Schneidley, what's Hector's full name? And can you give me a physical description? Oh, yes. It's Hector Martinez. And, oh, he's about six feet tall, about 180 pounds. Clean shaven, dark hair. I don't know how old he is. Um, you know, like I said before, he's 
He's a little bit mentally challenged. He, he's simple. Well, have you seen that movie, Forrest Gump? That's the way he is. That's the way wow. he is. Forrest Gump wouldn't hurt anybody, and neither would Hector hurt Well, Forrest Gump... Mr. Schneibley, nobody says Hector has he, uh, or would hurt anybody. probably didn't be Up man. until now, we didn't even know about Mr. Martinez. We're just trying to determine what the situation is. He's a little simple. Mr. Schneibley, wow. would you have a home phone number for Mr. Martinez? Of course, this Martinez? is 1995 well, yes, when they made uh, this. Well, not with me at the Different office. Different time. I mean, I'd, I'd have to call to get it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Can you give me a layout of the warehouse? Oh, well, yes. Well, it's mostly a big, empty building. Um, we keep it for extra storage, and Hector maintains the building for when we need extra space. Well, that's not what you asked, is it? No, it's not. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, okay, the you building was built the to acting utilize the tent. train tracks. And so the roll-up doors and the entrance face the railroad tracks. And when you walk in, well, it's just a big, open building. Um, Oh, well, I have some furniture stored in there from when the children were small, and, and my husband and the boys have some mini bikes in there as well. <laughs> that nice face, me. Is it just one large room? And there's an owl that keeps oh, his no, stuff there in there. That may be what caused upstairs. Hector to go crazy. Well, the second room, I don't know. It has I heard some about old that crazy old woman. Junk, really. Nothing, nothing important. Uh, uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh. You said upstairs. Is there a downstairs to the building as well? Oh, yes. I, didn't I mention that? No. Uh, well, it's mostly just beams and floor supports. And Oh, and Hector has his little makeshift office down there. Nothing fancy. That's good to know. Thanks for telling us. Is there an outside entrance to the basement, Mrs. Schneibley? <clears throat> oh, heavens no. No, I had that sealed up years ago. You know, we have trouble with hobos here. I mean, they ra ride the train in the day and... And, and at night stop and look for a place to sleep. Well, we literally had a that train, huh? camp down there. No, I had workmen come and cement and brick up that I door. had those hobos killed. No. Those people, you know, they're just a waste of my insurance time. Insurance rates, you have hobos in your building? <laughs> <laughs> those hobos, no, but there's only one entrance for them. They went to the basement and it's went through the warehouse. I don't remember if the stairs are in the first room or the second room. Is, is Does that matter? It does matter, twat. Mr. Schneibley, is there a phone line in the building? And do you know the number? Oh, yes, yes. I know. The number is 213 No, no, no. 1, 2, no, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Listen. No, I'll just have to call and get it for you. But there is a phone. It's in Hector's little basement office area. You know, I wanted him to have a nice little desk with a phone on it upstairs. But no, he insisted on having the phone installed downstairs in the basement. I bet he did, where he has all of his torture porn basement. happen. I like how Swap Pup's like, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you can tell me about the warehouse or about Hector? Nothing I can think of. It's, it's just a big warehouse. It's empty, and Hector is just a simple man trying to make a living. I can't understand how he could be causing all this trouble. It's just not like him. Mrs. Schneibley, we haven't determined that Hector is causing all this trouble. Mrs. Schneibley, we've set up a communications post uh, over by the ice house across the way. Could I ask you to go in there and use the telephone to call your office and get those phone numbers we talked about? Oh, well, sure, but I don't want to be in the way. I'll just use the phone in my car if that's all right. That'd be fine. Just get away from me, please. Well, there's more gunshots again. <laughs> they kill purple dress. Excuse me, sir. Yes, officer, what did you learn from the owner of the property? Well, the name of the missing warehouseman is Hector Martinez. Uh, he works Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., hasn't missed a day of work in five years. He's about six feet tall, weighs about 180 pounds, clean shaven, dark hair. Now, she says, He's mentally challenged. Uh, she's going to call her office and get a home telephone number for him. Good. She also said that the building was built in relation to the railroad. All the roll-up doors and the entrance door are on the same side only. She said that there are two large interior rooms, mostly empty. Okay. There's also a basement to the building. It houses Hector's office. He's blinking and a lot. And beams and floor supports. Okay. Unfortunately, Mrs. Schneibley doesn't recall if the stairs leading to the basement are on the first room or the second room. See. 
Uh, apparently, there is a telephone line into the building. It's in the basement. Uh, she doesn't know the like, number is that offhand. An abnormal amount of blinking, or is it just me? Good. Uh, one last thing. Mrs. Schneibly said that Hector's not the kind of person to hurt anybody, and she doesn't think it's him in there firing the rounds. Well, we'll find that out soon enough. Thanks. Good job. So in the next episode, we'll go deal with Hector. This is Officer Keeler. He was one of the responding officers to the 30 Adam. As I was telling Packmeyer, we get false alarms down here all the time. The wind's always blowing the doors open on these old buildings, or we have transients camping out. Last we have to shoot him. was gunfire. Did you see anyone? No, not really. Everything happened real quick. We were approaching the door. It was partially open. Bales went to reach for it. He had his hand on the doorknob. It seemed to me that the door was closing rather than opening. I got this sinking feeling in my stomach, and then wham. Bales was hit, and I was dragging him out of there. As I was saying, we'll uh, deal with Hector in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye now. Love this music. <laughs>